see we we're back and we have some more technical difficulties this time i forgot to hit record on my side Proud of but we're recording now so it's all good yes yes and i brought you a present i, the, present. I already I love presents i know you, uh, thank you for enjoying this a second time through this time captured on camera about one of these things so oh wait let me nice. there. there we go we have Hopefully a slate to start the show up. that's great yeah proud of us we're official uh big budget show here um Anyways, good to see you again. Good to miss you. you. Know. Yeah. You too. Yeah. Um, this is the Stuff Summer Says podcast with Steve. Steve. Steve, we actually have a lot to chat about. We've got schedules to chat about. Lots of schedules. To, that is on the schedule today. Um, and then we also have some Pat McAfee news to, to touch on. Um, and then this week's Old Guy, Young Guy is brought to you by you. Um because you apparently don't think I know what AM radio is. So uh, we'll, not we'll, what I suggested already. Yeah, I'm sure I suggested this earlier today. We will get to that. We need to be shortly. brought by some memory thing because I already forgot what I suggested to you. So I'm, I'm glad proud you. Of you. <laughs> the, the old guy, young guy segment brought to you by, yeah. by Pat, memory what, juice. What are the old, those old commercials that the people, oh, my memory is so much better. I think those things should be illegal, by the way. The memory commercials? Yeah. Because it's like people are juicing. That's like illegal. I mean... They should, feel, they should at least be a disclaimer. I guess right, it, so. unless you were like doing Jeopardy or like playing chess at a high level, like <laughs> that's fair. That's I fair. I don't really see any problem with it. Mm. Um, you know, I drink caffeine to make me awake so I can talk to you. Still jet lagged, Steve. I'm still jet lagged. Um, How long was the flight? What's that? How long was the flight? Eight, eight and a half. Okay, this is the longest flight I've been on. So, um, anyways. Um, when I got back to, to the old United States, uh, it was upfront day on Monday. So I think NBC and CBS and maybe Disney had their upfronts, or I think maybe Disney's is, is later this week. Um, we were recording on Wednesday night. Um, but usually that means college football schedules and time start coming out. And we have now have not one, but two of them. Um, we've got the first one, which was, we got earlier, um, which was the West Virginia game. That game will be on NBC and that will be their first non Notre Dame football experience, big 10 experience big 10 Saturday night, baby. Um, and then the other one we got was the Iowa game on CBS, a little bit of a surprise because that's on CBS and a night game, um, Essentially, how it works is because CBS still has the uh, the SEC contract. It seems like they can kind of pick and choose a little bit more mm-hmm. on what games they have for at least this season. And then next year, it will probably be virtually locked into the three thirty slot. It sounds like they can kind of have one night game, is is what I was reading, or it, that seems to be the suggestion in the air. Um, if you pay attention to those types of things, but. Um, Let's let's start with the West Virginia game being at 730. Um, there was also some other news related to that and all of the other games we have. We now know what the game plan for the season in terms of your attire. Um, well, maybe not Steve's attire, because I don't know if he's going to go to games this year, but at least my attire. Um, that first game will be the helmet stripe game. I think the role that I read, and I don't know how true this is, I think the role that I read related to the trademark dispute if you will between penn state and um the winnipeg jets relates to one whiteout game a season so that's why like other teams don't call it a whiteout game they say wear white um because it really only applies to like the football game um so i find it interesting that penn state is still going to do effectively the whiteout just maybe with the one blue section across the middle of the stadium all because NBC essentially wants that. If you look at the schedule, which you can look at on stuffsummersense.com, that's a shameless plug. That. that was nice. Thank you. Um, there's not really that many interesting games um, that first week uh, that that really um, NBC could have. Um, let me pull those schedules up right now. Uh, in the Big Ten, um, two of the games are already on Thursday and Friday. Um, so those games are taken off the board, so to speak. Um, the other game, the only other game that came to mind, I think is Ohio state and Indiana play each other. Yeah, they play each other, but I think West Virginia at Penn state uh, at night is probably far more interesting than 
any of the other games on the slate that week. Um, so I think that's probably why they went with that game. And if you remember, I had said I was wouldn't be surprised if they were actually going to move that to a Sunday night game. Um, but it seems like ESPN still wants that sp- that spot. Um, so, um, no, what there's something there's something like it's Florida State, right? Like somebody yeah. they've got a game that night. Yeah. No, it it was West Virginia at Penn State was the logical game that gets the, the Big Ten Saturday night. And you've known, if you've been watching, uh, it was the Big Ten men's basketball tournament. And I forget if it was NBC or CBS, probably CBS because the tournament, the the commercial for football was Beaver Stadium under the lights. Like, I mean, everybody everybody who's a TV executive, all the broadcast networks, that is, it is the best looking, it is the best looking, it's probably the greatest show in college football, right? Like if you're going to, or at least that's they've tried. I don't know that they've been consistent enough about that through the years, but it's 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 what people were looking for. It's what people know. The whiteout is the game in the Big Ten. It is the game in college football in many ways. We've had people through the years, you know, show up at the tailgate, you know, who are from Lord knows where, Alabama, some other state who said this is our bucket list trip. So, yeah, you get whiteout and whiteout light twice in the season. And West Virginia is right. It's, it's their, their next door rivals. Traditionally, they're intersectional rivals when you look at the conferences, right? So to speak, so they can sell that. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be a great event for NBC in terms of having it, and it it makes all the sense in the world if that's the game that's on night for the first weekend. Um, yeah, so I, I I'm not at all surprised by that one. Um, I am not surprised with the Iowa game being at night either. I am surprised that it was the whiteout ultimate. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm not um, because I think. Personally, I think James Franklin is a little petty, and I think he's still upset about 20, what was it, 2020? Yeah, 2022. No, 2021, sorry, and how that game shook out. And I think he just kind of wants to make Beaver Stadium hell. And and so, yeah, I'm not surprised by it. Um, I was surprised that it was it was, inter- it was very surprising if you pay attention to this, to see three, the time not be 3.30 um, with CBS getting a night game there. So I don't know how their SEC contract works because they only get one SEC. They used to only get one SEC night game that they would have to steal from ESPN. So I don't know if that still, they'll still have that or, you know. I think they'll still have that because this is early, right? Like I thought yeah. when, when, when you knew they were keeping the SEC and they were going to get whatever it is, seven big 10 games or whatever it is, something had to be at some oddball times. I mean, they just have, they just have to be a couple screwy times the way it works out. But the, the interesting thing to me is that the first two games you got game times for are two networks that Penn state hasn't been on in years, right? Like we talk about the change and this is the year of the change with, with, with ESPN and gone and Fox, the main one, you got, you got CBS and NBC, you know, staking their claim first for, for two of the bigger games in the schedule. I mean, it is interesting that the. Uh, I wonder if we can essentially just big noon all of you know the Michigan game and the Ohio State game at this point. Like I feel like I that the Michigan the, game for sure, right? And, and um, probably the Ohio State game because those are, if you think about the order of of the the pecking order, so to speak. If if these are two games that the conference is essentially slid up or the channels essentially slid up in the draft order to get. Um, probably the next best available games are Penn state versus Ohio state and Penn state versus Michigan. Um, yeah. I can't think of it. Maybe Michigan, Michigan state, but I, in terms of TV rankings off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure that, that that's those three games the, of those three teams mm-hmm. between those three teams are one, two, and three, and usually relatively Michigan versus Ohio state and then Penn state versus Ohio state. And then, Michigan, Penn State, in that order of, of at least the Big Ten, um, and sometimes nationally. Um, yeah, I think the other thing that was interesting to me that I found in one of the press releases, I believe this is the first time that NBC is will have had a Penn State game at Beaver Stadium ever. All of that stuff's not going to matter now through the rest of this contract, but yeah, I, I'm relatively surprised because there's only been three big 10 games announced and two of them are Penn state games. And, and they are not the two that I necessarily thought we would get um, maybe one of them, I think. Yeah. Well, I figured West Virginia that you're going to get, and, and and if you knew 
Iowa was going to be the whiteout, which you kind of figured it was, because they just can't wait to Michigan to for it to be the whiteout in November. You just don't know if the team's going to. I mean, they may only have one loss that time, but you get the whiteout early to hype the season and and get a little momentum going for it. And yeah, I think Michigan. It's a, probably a safe bet that the game versus Michigan and at Ohio State are. It'd be surprising, I guess, if if they weren't both big noon kickoffs. One of them certainly will be. Yeah, looking at the other options, there's not really anything that jumps out as big noon. Um, can always essentially pencil, lightly pencil in that Penn State Michigan State game at three thirty to follow mm-hmm. the. Um, so, I think we'll we'll guess some more kick times here as we we go throughout the summer and have nothing be- better to talk about. Um, but uh, anything else jump out at you? Like, are you okay with the stripe out being Michigan? Um, are you okay with kind of the the theme games in the order that they are, um, so to speak? Yeah, I think it's um, yes. I, you know, Veterans Day would be make sense in Michigan, right? But they're going to do it the stripe out. Like, I don't know why you couldn't do the stripe out and Veterans Day, but they're going to give the veterans their own their own day earlier. Um, but that's nitpicky. No, you know, you know what the dance card is going to look like every year, right? And and they've done a good job with that. They and, and thankfully they've gotten away from when they first started doing some of the themes. Like what was one of them? Wear your favorite jersey, player jersey, right? People were doing that anyway, and it doesn't drive attendance. And none of these really drive attendance, which they don't have to, right? They're going to be sold out. There's less than 50 season tickets left from some pitch I got last week. So that's wonderful. So make them events, make them things for fans can participate because you, you don't need to drive attendance. You need to drive engagement. You need to drive passion in the stands during the event. Well, and nine times out, well, nine times out of 10, when you put a, a game at night, regardless of who it's been, and there have been some weird night games, San Diego State comes to mind. Um, you know, even that one Rutgers game, that same season comes to mind people are going to show up to those games and the Michigan game is going to be probably the hottest ticket in town or, or the maybe one of two of the hottest tickets in town. Um, so you're, yeah, I, I think, I think that's an interesting point um, and a good point. Um, I don't the know. UMass I, I, game, which we've known, right. The UMass game kind of tossed in there, which we've known later in the season after conference play has begun. I mean, it's, it's where, it's where homecoming, I guess, kind of sort of always falls with the Big Ten's playing more games earlier. Yeah. So that that adjustment, which I think is probably a conference adjustment, adjustment makes me want to tell people who you who and there's a cohort of them and there are Penn State fans who will bitch about the SEC. Oh, well, you know, they schedule one softy late in the season. OK, well, we got UMass sitting right in the middle of conference play. I don't want to hear that anymore from from those folks. That's going to feel weird. That is is going yeah. to feel very weird. Um so I, I agree with you there. Um, going back to the Michigan game, not being the whiteout. The only reason why I, I wasn't surprised, I don't know if you caught this, but this year they released hoodies for the first time. Did you catch that? I don't know. This is the first year they've done hoodies. They've, they've done the short sleeve and long sleeves, mm-hmm. but they did hoodies. And that's why I thought maybe it was going to be the Michigan game. Um, but yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Um, you know what else I'm excited about about this schedule and the way the times are being announced? Although knowing the Penn State gods and the weather gods we're going to get rained on, there's a very high probability of two very nice days in, in September on Saturdays. Like, in, I don't know. I feel like... No, exactly. I mean, that's that. another reason that, that, that it goes, you do it. I mean, not that you do it early for that reason, but I think it's the momentum, right? And, and Iowa just makes all the sense in the world. Um, it'll... What may be missing from all of this, there'll be a big noon kickoff, probably show it with, with Michigan. But, you know, the whole game day streak that was such a big thing a couple of years ago and all the times we've done that. Uh, it'll be now, now, well, no, it's NBC uh, that has it. I was going to say with McAfee and whatever else, West Virginia, but it's an NBC game. So I well, think that'll be fun to watch as the season progresses. What people think of them, where they fit in the national consciousness that way for those kind of appearances well are we talking about the home streak or just having game day period because if penn state isn't let me do let me count here one two three four five six six and oh going going into that ohio state game right 
we've got problems. Yeah. And if Ohio State isn't six and zero going right. into that Ohio State game, they've got problems. But um, wasn't there a home streak of like four years in a row? I have to look. I have. We'll have to. We'll have to get our research department on that one. Yeah. No, I, I think they'll show up somewhere. I don't know if they'll show up at Beaver Stadium. That's all. You'll if get, Penn State gets past off. past Ohio State and it doesn't come for the Ohio State game. I don't know what else is on the November 11th schedule, but I can't imagine that there's two more or there's one more interesting game than Penn State, Michigan right. um, at that point in the year. That's fair. So, okay. Speaking of schedules, um, big news is the NFL schedule is out. Um, I want to have, I want to have two conversations about it. The first conversation relates to the, the, the big media news related to the schedule coming out this year is there's a lot more flex games and AFC on CBS and NFC on Fox relatively gone at this point. Like it, it doesn't follow, have to follow that role as much. Um, Does that mean anything for you? Or are you just like, whatever, like I, I'm going to turn on football and I know that there's a good game on one of those two channels or. Well, what I'd like like to know is when my team's playing, right? So I got a Steelers game that I don't have a date for yet, which, Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So that's the the part of the flex and part of whatever else. Um, So I think that's tough. And I I do think for fans and I think for Steelers fans, right? Everybody says they travel well, right? So you've got, and I don't know if they're going to be any good or not, but there's that late part of the season. The NFL has the ability to flex to Monday night with some stuff from what they were doing from like, what, like 12 to weeks, 12 to 17. Yeah, yeah. I think that's tough on fans. I, I, and I guess I, I don't know that it makes, I know that the game makes a difference in the ratings if they have a dog of a game. So that makes a difference for the advertising dollars. So that's why they want to be able to have a good game there. But I think that's really, really tough on the fans. I don't, I don't have a problem with the, with the 14 day window in college football. Cause you know, the game's being played on that day. But I think if there's a chance that the game, you don't know when the date is now and you want to book flights and you want to book hotels, that's just tough. Are you, I don't disagree with you, but are you forgetting the purpose of the NFL is not to have butts oh, no. in seats. It's to it's have t- people, they're producing TV, TV shows. viewers. Oh, yeah. no, they're, they're producing TV shows that are in 100 yard long screens. Yeah. Yes. No, I okay. That. Okay. Um, Cause to me, as somebody that goes to one NFL a, a game a year, knows that it's probably going to be at ho- a home game for the Steelers unless they're down, you know, down this way. Um, I don't, I, I don't think it matters to me. I think it's, it's more so the issue of finding my game and finding what channel it's on. And do I have to stream it illegally or not, which I've never done. I would never stream anything illegally. <laughs> um, well, it's the two Thursday night games for the Steelers, right? That's the thing yeah. for some fans, right? You got two games where you better have Amazon prime or plan to go out to dinner or know a friend who has it. Right. Well, well I, I guess think, if you're in the home market, you get, you get, local yeah, you, and I, but, and I haven't read about the home market for this situation, but that one divisional game is now going to be on Peacock and you have to have Peacock, which if you're a Penn state fan, you essentially have to have Peacock now too. Uh, maybe because who knows that UMass game might be, end up on Peacock type deal. Um, but uh, that one to me is is the more surprising, more interesting one of this whole situation, um, just because that's a very big, it's a very important game. I don't know if I like we get it because we have Comcast. I don't know if I'm subscribing if I'm not a Comcast user to Peacock, so I can watch that one NFL. NFL playoff game if my teams aren't especially if my teams aren't in it I, I'll just follow on Twitter right but that's the model that's existed forever for new services so when ESPN2 was new and trying to break ground and, and get viewers back when cable was cable they would put Duke North Carolina basketball on on the on ESPN2 and then promote the heck out of it it's not on ESPN it's on ESPN2 to make sure your cable company has it so you know they're going to do that they're going to put good games on some places where they hope people start signing up or finding them or doing something. Um, and I, and, and it typically works and, and and there's not much for the NFL that doesn't work. I mean, you know, the schedule release becomes this event of its own with all the teams and their videos on social media and all kinds of cool stuff. And it, it, 
I mean, you, you kind of knew the schedule. I mean, you at least knew everybody who they were playing when the season was over, right? Like the week it's over, here's their opponents for next year. Not a real big shock. You know, maybe if you're a Steelers fan, you're looking for like the one road game that looks interesting that you can make a trip for, or for, if there's one near you that you can go to. But they have done such a job, great job of monetizing everything and making everything a show. That's just the most amazing part about what the NFL does. I think to me, uh, along with the the CBS and the um, Fox role change, I think the other role change that I do like is we are no longer required to watch the Lions or whatever team on prime time. Like, it, like it's nice that they've gotten rid of that kind of requirement. Mm-hmm. I think that will make the, the schedule better more so than maybe the flex scheduling. Um, Cause I feel like there's been times when, when games have been flexed in and out and it's just like a total dud. Like they, they, they were just a total dud And that other game that got flexed for it actually ended up being a more, maybe not necessarily meaningful game, but a more interesting game to watch. Um, so I think that was interesting. Um, there's the black Friday game. Um, I don't know if that really does anything for me. It's just, it's more so annoying because it takes a, a, another day away from college football. And that's why I'm annoyed by, about it. Um, <laughs> excuse me, but other there than were some, that, there were some bowl game moves when the, after the league, like the, the peach bowl, yes. other places said, Oh, well, okay. Thank you very much. We're going to move yeah. away from you. Yeah. Um, so uh, we don't have the full bull schedule yet. That comes out at the end, the last day of the month. Um, so we'll get that. And when we get that, like, I think we'll, we'll get, start getting a better idea of how this is all going to work come next year when the playoff expands. And now we're going to have all of this competing mishmash that week before Christmas, um, as well. So, um, so that was the, the first point that I wanted to discuss. Anything else you'd like to add there before? We no, get I'm waiting the for the point. second point. Okay. The second point, the much like the NFL draft and really much like the combine and well, those are the only two things I can really think of NFL schedule release day has become a very big deal. Like it is, it is now, I want to know, did you watch the Titans video? It was the best thing I've seen in a while. Okay. Thank you. Do you, are you disappointed when your team doesn't put out a good enough video comparatively to like the Titans? Like, do you want, like, it, it feels like there's pressure on those, those oh, social media definitely is. Those, now. I mean, you know, because they're ranked. I mean, somebody goes through and ranks them on the athletic or wherever it was here that the all three or 30, 32 teams videos, the Steelers was okay. I mean, it was an older Fine. audience. It was kind of tongue in cheek. It was, you know, it was sometimes you take a risk on something that works. Sometimes it doesn't. The Titans was like almost like cheating, right? Because you're working on Broadway in Nashville with people are drunk. We don't have yeah. a clue. No. And and it's amazing how clueless people are. And it worked, it worked wonderfully. Well out so, of ten. Well out of ten. Yeah. yeah, I I I really feel like the whole I enjoy schedule release day because I feel like it's a it's now become a, a day that you look for forward to on the NFL calendar. Um it's a lot of fun. Um, the chargers video again was great this year. Mm-hmm. Did you, did you watch that one? Yep. There's a lot of good Easter eggs in that one. Um, and I thought the Steelers one was all right. I, I would be, I would like to sit in on one of those, those pitch meetings just, just to hear, be a fly on that wall. I mean, I think air. people would be amazed at the amount of time and effort that go into those things. Right. And, and, and what makes it, it would be interesting to know what makes it a success. Like, do, or is there a view on the number of goal or goal and the number of views or shares or or that it just gets produced and, and sends a subtle message or a, or a full-fledged straightforward message like what makes it a win for them because those aren't inexpensive efforts for the most part i mean we're not making super bowl commercials out of stuff but it's still not you've, you've created time and energy you probably started with four or five ideas and honed it to one um and sometimes it's just it just works. I mean, the Titans one just <laughs> just worked. You know? It was incredible. Um, and I appreciate that the other teams played in in off yes. of of yep. it. Um, the Colts changed their Twitter bio. The Falcons changed their name um, on Twitter. So I'm glad that people are self aware. Um, yep. Maybe we should do some reaching out to some of the people we know that work in those those That's types of departments. Uh, maybe yeah, we can have one or two of those people on. Um, but yeah, it's it's good to sit here and talk football with you in May as we have nothing else to then talk about for the next like, and for us, three months. It, it influences us. We talked about, uh, we talked yesterday 
on our way to our event about those schedule videos and what what we could do in, at the start of a semester that would be something fun, something similar, yeah. something genuine, you know. So no, it, it's it's it raises the bar on creativity and content creation, and I think those are good things. And I mean, I I don't know what the NFL touches that doesn't go well, but there's not a lot. No, no, not at all. No, no. Um. All right. Cool. Um. Speaking of the NFL, um, everyone's favorite former punter, um, made a pretty big announcement. Um, I'm sure if you pay attention, if you're watching to this point in the podcast, you probably already know because you're you're very well plugged in. But um, Pat McAfee and his show is officially joining ESPN. Uh, there had been talks that they were kind of the the front runner for a while. Um, to me, very interesting, not necessarily surprising. Um, as somebody that watches that show, especially more during football, um, football season, I am, I am interested to see how he does or does not change. And that show does or does not change. Um, just because it's very they know that they don't. They, they knew that they were a satellite radio show mm. for a while, type thing. Um, you he even addressed that that there was, you know, we're gonna have to stop saying f bombs less. You know, we're gonna say those less often. Um, so I'm interested to see that. I don't think he, you know, through all of the stuff he's done, he's really stuck to what's worked well and what he's done well. And I don't think that's gonna change. Um, I am very fascinated to see how people in your generation, Steve, and, you know, really just like the general public takes to him um, because this is a new era for ESPN in the sense of like, we're really shaking up what, what you're about to see on ESPN every day. Like this is not your grandfather's ESPN type thing. Do you no, it's, probably not, it's probably not mine in some ways. Realistically, I mean, you know, ESPN, TV, well, and radio, right? Like I had Mike and Mike in the morning, right? For a decade and a half of people who were a little older than me talking sports. They were more middle America. I mean, they weren't, they weren't LA and New York. They were for all the stations across the country that worked, um, that needed, that needed programming and were happy to have it. Um, I appreciate what McAfee does with his show. I appreciate his the fact that he's genuine and sincere. I think what may change him, God, this is going to sound preachy. I think what may change him more than venue, maybe fatherhood, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe I get, and maybe because I was never, <laughs> I was never like bro, laugh guy, that kind of stuff. And there's a, there's a piece of that show that's too, Immature isn't the word they write word. It's broy. It's yeah. Bro -y. There's too there's too much broy locker room stuff there for me, even though I know there's some good stuff in there, right? So if he comes this direction just a shade and doesn't lose himself to to the people who really want it to be broy, I think they're going to be more than fine. I mean, I, I think he's going to create, you know, from the stuff I heard him talking about when he was talking about it, like he's going to get some of the, the logistical stuff off his plate, right? ESPN is going to say be here and do this kind of stuff. You don't have to worry about this, but be yourself. Right. And they'll take care of legally stuff and whatever else. Um, and I think that's a good thing. His charitable stuff is good. Like the way that he does his social, social media and reaches out and does charitable things. I think all that stuff resonates no matter what age you are. So if it gets just a, a tick or two more mature for me, tick or two more mature than it is, that'll be good for me. Um, but I, I think he's going to succeed no matter what. Like I, it, it's, it's a time it's proven already. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to fail by any means. Um, but I, I am fascinated to see how even things like him having to have commercials now, like not that he really doesn't have commercials now because he kind of has those like breaks um, on the show. Um, but I'm, I'm interested to see how the production maybe does or doesn't increase. Like, are they going to keep it kind of that same authenticity that they have now, which has that youtube -y feel to it which i enjoy because it makes it does make it feel more more authentic um or are they going to get the arsenal and weapons that espn has um 
you know, will they, the other thing that's very interesting to me is one of their, their top guests is Ian Rappaport. Is he going to stay, stay mm-hmm. on? I mean, he's on the show almost at least three times a week, some weeks, and if not more during football season. Um, so there's a, there's a couple guys like that that are come on the show that, you know, I don't know if they're going to, they're going to do that as much. And they say they're not. So, you know, let's give them the benefit of the doubt and, and see how that happens or see what happens. I would, I guess I'd be surprised if there weren't more ESPN talent, right? I mean, yeah. you, you're going to have a bell cow. You're going to have a main show. That's what you do. You're the leader for the network puts the other people out there. And ESPN isn't at a loss for good people that, mm-hmm. that would still fit that mold and, and, and work for the show. And I think commercials wise and production wise, we haven't seen it. So maybe it doesn't exist, but we haven't seen it. Maybe they just haven't tried it. I think the soccer commercial, no commercial sponsored segment by bug on the screen all the time stuff could work in, in a way that that's what I hasn't would been prefer. tried before. That's right? what I would prefer. I mean, he said the show is going to stay on YouTube and that is the hallmark. He said, he said throughout the entire process, even when he was on XM radio, he was like, we're going to keep the YouTube show and it's always going to be free. And that was the essential landmark. So I, w- I'm fine with it. It doesn't feel intrusive. Like, there's already enough ads. Like I would prefer less commercials, more talk and just this segment sponsored by. Right. Blah, blah, blah. Like, right. I mean, you could do with digital desks, right. You could put this, the logos right up on the desk and make them big. And well, and even if it's on YouTube, if you go to commercial, then the YouTube segments could be sponsored by whatever. And then you get a little bit different content there, right. When they're going out and you got two or three minutes of more specific YouTube stuff, there's all kinds of options, which is just, you know, they're smart people. They're going to put their minds together and come up with some stuff for when it launches. And I think it'll be cool. Um, so, yeah, like I said, though, I, I am, I was kind of like thinking about this the other night. We're entering a different era of ESPN. Um, one that is, this is what like you, they're, they're, addre- they're realizing they're addressing. They need to, be younger, not that they they're losing subscriber or well, they are losing subscriber, but not that they are losing audience as much. Like you're still going to ESPN, and that's still one of your default channels type thing. Um, it's just now making sure that my generation is aware of it. Um, and I think that's a good. Their studio awesome. stuff has been. They've lost me. I mean, I, I, but I'm old, right? Like I I don't get Stephen A. Don't care. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it's all bombast. It's all, you know, and I, I don't think that he's, I think he's intelligent and smart and has a plan, but it's, it's mostly bombast this. And it, and it seems like it's a show. Conversely, Pat McAfee seems more genuine, seems, you know, just more it sincere is, about what he does. It is just like our show, Steve. It's, it is two, it is people just hanging out, having a conversation. Exactly. That's exactly I mean, we what need this more is. People around for production, but yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, that's coming. That's, that's exactly Oh, we are. We'll, we'll have a five hour daily live show, Steve. We will quit our. There we go. Jobs. No jobs. <laughs> Just show. Just show. Um, all right. Anything else you want to discuss there? Nope. Can't wait to see it. Okay. Steve, this morning we were texting as we do to get um, the, the, um, sorry, the, the old guy, young guy rundown. And you asked me one of the dumbest questions you've ever asked me. You said, AM radio, like, do you know what that is? Because it'll be no longer be in cars soon. Steve, well, yes, I know what I AM radio sincere. is. I was just making sure you knew. God. I had to, like, I have a, I have a, I have a degree in <laughs> communications. Yes, I know what AM radio is, Steve. So your podcast is putting AM. This is the reason why people are getting rid of AM radios because podcasts like this one. That's exactly right. But this is this is this week's old guy, young guy, Steve. Yes, I do know what AM radio is. Are you, you upset? Do, about do you listen? Do you listen to AM radio now? When was the last time you listened to it? The only time I listen to it is for live sports games. Okay. If if I am driving somewhere and I am looking for a Penn State game, for whatever reason, a Steelers game. For whatever mm-hmm. reason, um, and not really the lightning. If I'm in PA, maybe the Pirates. Because, but I will just use. The, I just use the app, Steve. There's an app for that. I know there is. I, I found my Pirates the other way. Well, it's funny because our kids used to. Because I listened in Pittsburgh, right? Sports talk daylight was was on AM. Games were on AM. Um, if we're driving someplace at night, like, and I can get a station. I mean, I would know 
when I was covering sports in Pittsburgh and driving places, I, I would know the Midwest stations that I could get with the powerful signals to listen, you know, where I was driving. But the girls, when they were younger, at one point would be like, why are we listening to the fuzzy radio tonight? Why, why are we listening fuzzy to the fuzzy radio? radio? Right, because AM, right, comes with, right? And it, and, and it was fuzzy radio. And, and we listened, they, they endured a lot of fuzzy radio because that's where the sports was. Um, and, it, and all the stuff in the future will be, because there's an app for that, right? Like it's going to be fine. But I do think it's a loss for. Um, there's an art to there's an art to talk radio. You you enjoy you still listen to talk radio more than right. Like that's oh, you, yeah. that's yeah. pretty much what you listen to when you drive around. Car, yeah, I mean, I, if I can't find something that's that they seem sane, but like yeah. Um, but I mean, AM is just another outlet, another place. I mean, because AM radio was the you know in the seventies and sixties, AM radio was was more musical stuff. Like that's that was AM radio. If you go back and look through the old record stuff that's am radio was where people found their music um so i think it's lost that way just outlet wise it'll stuff will show up other places but sports was am radio. i mean that's what it was you get the transistor radio and vin scully right if you're in la or wherever else so um it'll be an adaptation for some people and for other people be like nope got the app thank you very much so i don't know i was thinking about the i was thinking when i read this article and i was thinking about this the other day like we, I do listen. There's a good, there is a good morning show, um, but it's on FM here in DC. Um, it's the the Elliot in the morning show, um, just like a typical morning zoo type show. Mm-hmm. But he actually talks the whole time. Um, but other than that, like everything that I listen to is coming through my phone in in the car now. And so serious, and maybe some songs. Well, okay, well, right? but I mean, it's not talk. It's it's more musical stuff. I don't. What do I have talk wise? You listen not to ESPN radio more. I listen well, but less less so because now they did their morning shows. Not, you know, I just don't, I don't, you know, they're not my guys, you know. So we'll see. Okay, well, R.I.P. A.M. Radio. Sad moment of silence for Steve, who's very upset. At least I know what it is. That's all that matters. There we go. Points. Um. Me. All right. Anything else you want to discuss on this week's episode of the old podcast? No, I'm on the radio for a week. So we can back again. Okay. All right. Um, let's see where to start. We have a website. You can start there. Um, it's stuffsummersets.com. Uh, we haven't written anything in a while. I, I, I was on vacation, so. We're going to have a cool looking. series starting. Oh, 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 Steve's got some ideas. The seed story. No, the seed oh, story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah. That's what I'm yes. saying. Okay. All right. I have we'll, a little we'll, map and everything. Okay. All right. And he's got it planned out. Um, and we, we will have a, so the website's there on the website. You can sign up for the newsletter. There will be a newsletter later this month. Um, Steve, that's going to send on, on May 30th, <laughs> May 30th. So send me your stuff, Steve. Um, and other than that, let's see, we've got, uh, we've got this YouTube channel. If you're listening, um, watching, uh, yep. watching on YouTube, yep. um, one of those subscribe buttons again, very surprised that people watch this, listen to us. Um, really do appreciate it. Um, if you're listening in podcast format, we also appreciate that very much. Um, did you just go to like podcast voice right there, second for a second? No, did okay. I? It sounded Isn't... like you went to when you're listening to podcast format. If you're listening to podcast, format, yeah, yeah. It's, it's my NPR voice. That's um, what I'm saying. Well, I don't know. NPR down here is FM. I think. Do you is, do you know is NPR FM up here too? Yep. Okay. Um, so if you're listening to podcast format, um, you can you can five stars, thumbs up, all of that. Um, Do you have an email address? I have an email address. I, I knew I was forgetting, forgetting one more thing. It's Darian at StuffSummersays.com. The podcast has a, an email address, which is podcast at StuffSummersays.com. Steve, you have an email address. It's Steve at StuffSummersays.com. Great. And then we have Twitter handles. Mine is at Stuff Summer Says. Steve's is? At Steve Sample. I think we got everything in. I'm going to remember to put the music in front of the podcast this week. I forgot to do that last week. So that is. Maybe that was like the Amish version. No yeah. music. We just. No dancing, right no music, it. straight into it. Yep. All right. Um, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye. <laughs>